there's less than 1% penetration. And that's a fact because I can't spend Bitcoin here. I gotta still spend US dollars or MasterCard credit or, you know, established credit. Any one of these stores, there's no penetration in the real world. But there's a $27 to $800,000 increase in investment in this space. But there's a 1% penetration in the real world. So what happens when it gets 5% real world? When more people can spend their, their cryptocurrency at the store, at the restaurant, on the airplane. Which is why we came to Amsterdam because there's a city out here where the whole city is cryptocurrency friendly. And this is an example of what's gonna happen to the rest of the world. And we think that if you get in now, when the value spreads, when the accessibility spreads, you'll be sitting on the right chair. And, um, you know, being out here further brought that to my attention, reinforced my, my, my belief in it, and we put our money where our mouth is. Basically what it is, is there's a, there's, a, there's a huge amount of value in this cryptocurrency space with trading and exchanging, different forms of currency, different times of acquisition, different times of selling. It's very similar to the stock market. So there's people over the last five, six years that became very successful trading currencies via different platforms. And so what it is is there'll be a big trade that takes place and you'll hear about it next week. And they try to mirror it, but the opportunity came and passed. Very similar to stocks. So what happened with FollowCoin, FollowCoin gives you the opportunity. It, it blends the social networking element with the purely financial element of being involved and being aware of great opportunities with socializing people that know about the great opportunities. So what it is, it's a mix and it's a, it's a platform where you can follow successful traders. You, you already know the top 10 traders in cryptocurrency. And if you don't, they'll be listed or the top 50 or the top 100, however dynamic you, you want to You mentioned waiting. It just brought to my mind that you were one of the first people to talk about cryptocurrency. Right. And my sister, for instance, invested a few years ago. She bought Bitcoin for like, I think it was $600 a share. Oh, she passed. And so now when it's up to 10 racks plus, yeah. Like, how do you project that, especially the urban youth who are like, cryptocurrency, what if I can't touch it? You know what I mean? Um, I mean, it's just something that <clears throat> this is the infant, infant stage of that right. whole category. It's an investment category. So, you know, um, educate yourself, obviously. Don't just, don't just follow what nobody say. But I feel like, you know, to get in Apple really early. Right. or to get in Uber, or to get in any one of these companies that ended up becoming so major. Right. You know, you hear them stories about how beneficial being early was. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to be vocal about the opportunity and just like, you know what I mean, let everybody hear somebody that's in rap and that's in hip hop talking about it so it'll hit their consciousness and if anything, they just go do their research about it. Right. Yeah. Did you sell off any of your Bitcoin when it hit its peak a couple of weeks ago? I didn't know it had hit its peak. I knew it was growing. I'm like, it's going to go to 100,000. We're going to get lit. But, I mean, I, I'm in it for the long run, though, so I'm just chilling. I ain't, I ain't looking to cash out no time soon. I'm going to just pay attention to where, um, you know, like I said, I think it can continue to grow. Imagine when you could go to Rouse and spend Bitcoin. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's that going to do to the price of the, of the coin? So I think that when they, like, integrate more places, you can actually spend it, mm -hmm. the value going to shoot up even more. That's true. You when know, there's money in 2017 going into 18, you know, is it paper? You know, is it, is it agreed value? What is it? What makes something currency? You know, so that was what the debate was, and everybody was revolving around that as a question. But just cryptocurrency is, um, I think it's like a form of karma. I think that the banks had such a crooked model that the engineers and software designers and programmers was like, we're not gonna fix this with a protest. We're not gonna fix this with a march on Wall Street. We're gonna fix this with technology. And they created a, a equalizer that just checkmated the whole game. You know, that's what my view on it. It's just like the energy balancing out what went wrong over there and just the, the, the disadvantage that the people were at. The cryptocurrencies balancing that out or will in the long run. It's gonna take a while, but it's gonna create an option. And you're not gonna have to go operate in that system that led to like 2008, all the banks collapsing in the real estate bubble and all the malpractice 
of, of power that, you know, was happening in the banking industry and the central banks and all that. So it's, it's like, damn, that was slick. Whoever came up with that was slick. If you really peep it from a political point of view, you know what I mean? That was real effortless checkmate. You know what I mean? They exited before anybody knew what was up. And you still got bailed out. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. It's an it's interesting conversation. I've had it with some people and, you know, some people are like stuck on money so much. And I'm like, man, money's not even backed by the gold system anymore. Yeah. So it's like, what is it really worth? It's whatever right. we, you know, want to put on it. But really it's just a piece of paper, you know, just like a credit card, just a piece of plastic. And it's the, the inferred value that we put on it. And as long as everybody assumes that it's worth that, it is. But if somebody tomorrow's like, that's not worth shit, mm-hmm. it's really not backed by anything. Mm-hmm. So it's like, why not try out a new currency? It's, it's a lot of reasons that, you know, political reasons why it's, a big thing and it's financial reasons why it's a big thing you know and even like on a simple level of like sending money overseas or something to be able to do that peer-to-peer and not have no no middleman with a fee and with a policy it's just a direct transaction that's you know regulated by a public ledger that's a big innovation if you understand like banking and paypal and all that type of shit you know somebody told me that it's like what the internet was and, and like uh the early 90s and think about what that turned into and all the billion dollar businesses that was built off of that. That's like what the cryptocurrency blockchain opportunity is similar to. So it'll take a while before we see it mature and really turn into what it's potentially, it can potentially be.